Hey guys, it's Jordan and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Codrone Mini. So let's get started. So first, to turn on the drone, you want to plug in the battery. So you're going to slide in the battery into the bottom bracket down there and you're going to connect the battery into the actual drone. Once the drone is hooked up to the battery, the drone should start flashing red. So let's look at the remote. If you turn the remote to the back and pull off the cover, there's going to be a place for you to insert two AAA batteries. If you don't have batteries, you can also power the remote by plugging it into a micro USB cable. After you plug it in, there should be a solid red light on the drone. So if we disconnect the remote from the micro USB, the drone will start flashing red, which means it's disconnected. But once we plug in the remote and there's a solid color on the drone, that means that the drone is connected to the remote. So let's go take a closer look at the Codron Mini Remote. In the upper left, we have two settings, speed and start slash stop. So if you tap the upper left button once, you can alter the speed of the Codron Mini. And if you hold the upper left button, you can make the drone take off. And if it's already in the air, you can also hold the upper left button to make it land. Now, if you look at the upper right button, if you tap it, you can change the LED color. And if you hold it, you can actually make the Codron Mini flip in the air. So let's change the colors on the drone. In this clip, I'm tapping the upper right button of the remote, which is changing the colors of the Codron Mini. So as you can see in the clip, I'm cycling through a variety of colors. And this last setting is my favorite in which the Codron Mini can actually cycle by itself through all the colors. So the next thing I would like to show you guys is how to make the Codron Mini take off. In order to do this, I'm going to hold the upper left button on the Codron remote. So I'm going to hold it down for a few seconds, release it, and the drone should take off. So let's move on to a clip of me flying the drone in my house. In the bottom left, there is a hand cam so I can show you guys my hand movements and how I am controlling the drone. One of my favorite features of the Codron Mini is its durability. I've probably crashed into hundreds of walls and ceilings and the drone is fine every single time. The Codron Mini's durability makes it perfect for learning how to code. When first testing your code, your drone will most likely not be perfect. You'll probably have errors or bugs that make the drone crash. Because of the Codron's durability, I can assure you that the drone will still be functional. All you have to do is pick it up place it where you want it to take off, fix your code, and then run it again. Now another great feature of the Codron Mini is actually how easy it is to fly it. So in the top left of the remote, there's a button in which you can change the speed of the drone. So when I first learned the drone, I actually put the drone to the slowest speed so that I would have the most control. So if you're first learning the drone, I highly suggest you to drop the speed down to the lowest setting so you can learn easier. If you're in a small room, I also recommend you to use the slowest setting so that you have the most control of your drone. However, if you have a larger space, you can increase the speed of the drone and utilize more of that larger space. So as you can see in the clip, I am flying the drone inside of my living room. Although it is recommended that you fly this drone indoors only, I actually have found success flying it outside when there is no breeze. Because of the Codron's mini small size, it is easily affected by external factors. So if you're flying it outside on a windy day, there's a chance that you'll lose control of the Codron Mini. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys later.